Good afternoon and welcome to the OGRA and MTO webinar, Changes for the Highway Traffic Act. So today we are joined with myself, I'm Claudette, I work for the Ontario Good Roads Association, and our two subject matter experts are Brian, who is with me, and Jennifer, who is online. So we will be starting the presentation at this particular time, and I'm going to turn it over to Brian, who's going to start with the introduction. For those of you who are joining us, we will be taking questions at the end of the 30-minute presentation. So if you can type in all of your questions as you go along in your chat box, we will definitely try our best to address them before the end of the presentation. The webinar is scheduled for one hour, so we should be ending at approximately 2 o'clock. And now we turn over to Brian. Thanks, Claudette. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining this afternoon. Uh, my name is Brian Swan. I'm the manager of the business innovation team in carrier safety and enforcement at the Ministry of Transportation. And I'm joined by Jen Rienzo. And Jen is a project coordinator in the business innovation team. She's going to be leading us through the presentation this afternoon. But I'd just like to thank you for joining. And also, I understand that some of you may have tried to join a previous uh, webinar on this topic last week, um, and we were experiencing some technical difficulties at the time. So apologies for that. Um, hopefully, uh, um, you'll find the information we provide useful um, and valuable for you. Um, we wanted to kind of go through uh, a recent change that we've made in the Highway Traffic Act that enables certified superload escorts. So uh, there was, Jen's gonna go through in, in a lot more detail, but there was a need to provide some options for uh, escorting and managing the traffic around these things that the Ministry of Transportation determines or deems to be superloads. Um, and that's what we've done with the, with the legislative changes. And I think what we're presenting you today is how this program works for the province and introducing this to you as an option um, that you may choose to use in your own municipalities or in your own jurisdictions. So with that, I'll just turn it back over to Jen and she can walk you through the deck. Excellent. Thank you everybody for joining. Um, my name is Jen Rienzo. I am the project coordinator for the business innovation team and my portfolio is working on um, oversize overweight permits and the just to give you a little bit of, um, as, of what I'd like to talk to you about today is a bit of the background um, uh, talk about the new Ontario regulation that has come out for certified superload escorts talking a bit more in depth about the certified escort vehicle the certified superload escort person the certified superload escort program itself Talking a little bit about OO permitting and traffic management plans, and as Claudette said, there will be time for questions at the, at the end. So just a little background um, about us. The Ministry of Transportation issues approximately 46,500 oversized overweight permits a year. So they can be anything from construction equipment to wind turbine components, anything that is oversized what the Highway Traffic Act allows, we issue permits for them. In approximately 2,500 of all of the permits issued are for excessively large or heavy loads, which we would call super loads. We've seen a big increase in the last few years of wind turbine components, and a lot of these super loads fall, uh, a lot of these loads fall under the super load category. And you're going to hear me say super loads a lot today because the legislation and the regulation for us really is, is about our super loads. And those are loads that are in excess of 120,000 kilograms, over five meters in width, and over 45.75 meters in length. So I think it was about 2015, um, the government had committed to streamlining super load permits by amending the Highway Traffic Act to allow more options for these super loads and also committed to taking a look at our OO permit processes and provide a more streamlined, efficient approval process, exploring some enhanced permitting options and a coordinated per permitting service. So the ministry drafted legislation to amend sections 110 and 110.1 of the Highway Traffic Act 
to allow the minister to the ability to designate the authority to direct traffic when escorting an overdimensional vehicle. What that means is that they allowed us to put in place a certified superload escort program and not have the police who were the only people allowed to direct, direct traffic around these loads, letting them move away. The OPP was interested in working on their core business duties and allowing us to move over to a certified superload escort program. The bill received royal assent on March the 22nd and was proclaimed effective on July the 1st. Now it was proclaimed effective July the 1st. We um, don't have, we have until July 20, or sorry, January 2019 is when the police will be stopping using the, um, escorting these loads. So the OPP is our primary policing partner and their pay duties will stop um, as of January the 1st. Brian, do you have anything to add to that? Oh, that's good, Jen. Okay. So we developed the, the initial legislation and it's 110.5 in the Highway Traffic Act that talks about um, allowing the movement of certified superload escorts in, in conjunction with a permit. Now, we also had to develop a regulation to support that legislation. So from that came regulation 215-18. There's a hyperlink, so I'm going to give every. I'm going to um, give Ogre the copy of this deck for them to distribute to its members, and you can actually click on that hyperlink, and it will bring you up the actual legislation. This part of the legislation details um, of the regulation. Sorry, details the requirements regarding the appointment, the training, the vehicle appearance, identification, signage, and the communications for certified superload escorts. Additionally, the minister amended the existing distracted driving um, regulation as well to allow superload es super escorts um, the use of their handheld devices during the course of their duties. So this regulation also extends the authority of non-police escorts to superload super escorts issued by the municipalities where superloads are transported on municipal roads. So this allows you to be able to use the certified superload escort if if you wish to use to go this route, you're more than welcome to use these certified superload escorts, but you can also continue using your current um, municipal police forces as well. So when I first started this program, this um, portfolio, we started with with going to industry and talking to industry about what is it that is working in our oversized overweight permit department, what changes need to be done, how can we improve um, our, our client customer service with you and how can we support your business growth. And this, the main areas of concern for stakeholders was our customer service wait time, our restricted dimensions on our permits, and the inconsistency in permitting practices between us, municipalities and other jurisdictions as a whole. The stakeholders also indicated to us that it was becoming more difficult to secure and confirm police resourcing to assist in traffic control when moving superloads. So the certified superload escort program is a big part of what my job has been for the last couple of years. But another part of it is also implementing some initiatives that came from our stakeholder consultations. And some of those um, initiatives are seven day permitting. So we used to issue permits for two to three days. Now we issue them for the full week. We also allow weekend travel on permits that we never used to allow. So we used to only allow weekend travel for annual permits. Now we allow weekend travel for everything except superload permits. And we'll take a look at the superload weekend travel down the road as well. But as of right now, it's only um, for loads below superload. We also introduced some electronic permitting where the where stakeholders and carriers can actually carry electronic copies of their permits instead of having to carry paper portions. We've also changed the enhanced per, our permit structure to allow an enhanced annual permit. So we took our current annual permit, we gave a second tier that allowed greater dimensions. Same with our project permit, we had our existing project permit and then we enhanced 
the the um, dimensions on those project permits. And I think what's interesting is the first three, the seven-day permitting, the weekend travel, and the electronic permitting, those were actually identified in our 2017 Ontario Burden Reduction Report, saving our carriers almost nine million dollars with just those three um, those three initiatives. So we've done some really great work, and then this year we introduced the enhanced permit structure, which has really been a, a, a reduction of burden on business as well. And now we've, in the mid-year, we introduced the certified super load export program. So before I get into the escort vehicles, I just wanted to uh, ask Brian if he had any comments before I moved into it. Well, I think the only only thing is uh, just to just to reinforce that a big driver for moving the program in this direction was that our policing partner, the resources that we use to help control traffic around these these loads, the OPP, uh, has you know some significant resource challenges in order to continue doing that service. Some of you may have similar challenges with your police services in your jurisdictions, and um, I think that's a that's a good driver a reason for taking a look at at utilizing certified super load escorts. Go ahead, Jack. Thanks, Ryan. So the certified what the next little bit it will talk a little bit about what the requirements for these certified super load escort vehicles and people are going to be. And when we took a look at this, we actually got some feedback from our, our partners in the Ontario Provincial Police and the Ministry of Community Services, uh, Community Safety and Social Services, and our stakeholders. We kind of took a look at what um, was the norm within other jurisdictions and tried to follow suit. And we'll also, we wanted to, it to be able to, for the public to these vehicles to be recognized by the public. So when they're when these vehicles and people are directing traffic, the public knows, hey, I need to pay attention to these, just as if they were police officers. So the, the escort vehicles themselves are going to have to display the words oversized load on either the front, back, or on the roof facing both the front and the back. Now, in our other permits, we've allowed the D sign. Unfortunately, the D sign for public recognition, they don't really know what the D means. So we've chose to, the only option for these loads is to use the actual words oversize load. They also need to display the signs certified escort on both sides of the vehicle and on the rear. They also have to have orange blaze marker flags on each side of the vehicle and an amber light as well. So in addition, those are the regulatory requirements. We've also added a couple of permit conditions onto our permits that state how the, those orange flags have to be positioned. It also states that your vehicle that you're going to use has to be a full-size pickup truck. Um, no smart cars, minivans, it actually has to be a, a pickup truck. And there's the, the specifications on what the actual pickup truck needs to look like. And the certified super load escort, the signage for these vehicles, the below you'll see it on, there's an actual diagram of the size. Uh, these are minimum size requirements and the same color would be used. So the, the um, orange and they're orange and black signs. And we've, I've actually seen a couple of them out on the road recently. So that's a, that's a good thing. So along with with the escort vehicle, the escort persons need to be similarly 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 dressed as well. So if they get out of the vehicle to flag, they'll all kind of have the same look and feel. So the escort persons also who are driving these loads, they have to. We want to make sure that they have a record of compliance with the Highway Traffic Act. So before you can even get into the vehicle and do the training, you have to. Have well, you have to have completed the training. You have to possess a valid Class G driver's license or higher, or the equivalent. And the license has to be valid for at least four years. So this means no graduated licensing. It's a Class G or higher. Uh, the demerit points can't be more than six. 
they would have had to have completed Ontario Traffic Manual Book 7 training, and they had to have had previous experience in the, the movement of oversized overweight loads. This could be as a private escort, a commercial driver of oversized loads, or in the police forces as well. So the reason behind that is we wanted to make sure that the people who are moving these oversized loads, they have some experience in the industry to start with, that their first day on the job isn't going to be moving the certified super, moving the super load. So as well, the escorts will have to be identifiable and they'll have to show proof of their appointment upon request. And right now, escorts from other jurisdictions, they must be certified in Ontario. We do have some jurisdictions in the United States that do have um, certification. Those people who are wishing to be in Ontario to move super, super loads, they would have to apply and become certified in Ontario. Their jurisdiction, um, it, it, we don't have any reciprocal agreement with them at this time. So the next one, this is just a picture so you have an idea um, of what the certified super load escort certificate looks like. The ministry isn't publishing the names of the certified super load escorts person. Um, if you are concerned whether or not they are, you can always request to see a copy of their of their appointment. Everybody is issued one, and it'll be green in color. So once they're certified and they're out there directing traffic, they have to have a, their garments to meet specific standards, and these are similar standards that are already in the Ontario Health and Safety um, Act right now. They're they're comparable, so. It's mainly the blaze orange vest, and then it gives you um, examples of what the actual vest and garment looks like. And as well, it, they have to, if they're going to get out of their vehicle to direct traffic, they have to use the standard stop sign. And these are the three conditions of that stop sign. The majority of the um, the the trap the way that um they control traffic is with the positioning of vehicles they they will at sometimes have to get out of vehicles at some point but a lot of it is done through vehicle positioning okay before i start the next i will hand it over to brian to see if he has anything to add no, I think that's fine, Jen. The one thing just to bear in mind and the pieces that Jen just went over is those are the same as for the traffic apparel that the uh, certified super load escort would be wearing um, and the stop sign are exactly the same as the current construction regulations under the Occupational Health and Safety Act. Excellent. Thank you. So the next part of the presentation is I wanted to talk a little bit about our Certified Superload Escort Program. The program itself is going is um, is every every Superload Escort in Ontario will need to complete successfully the MTO approved training course before being eligible to be an, a Superload driver. There are some questions that have come out about what if, what if my load is under Superload, but still require a private escort. So private escorts that accompany loads below the super load threshold, so those were the thresholds I spoke at the beginning of the slide presentation, they don't require certification. They are only to escort a load as a warning to the public. They have no authority to control traffic. So the Certified Super Load Escort Program is actually a voluntary program that gives organizations the authority to train and test their own employees or they can test uh, students for certification based on ministry-approved curriculum. So the ministry has developed the curriculum that's needed and we developed the curriculum through um, consultations with um, our stakeholders as well. So p organizations, who want to participate in delivering the Certified Super Load Escort Program must first successfully complete the Ministry's evaluation and approval process. So the, the actual structure of the Certified Super Load Escort Program is very similar to a program we already have in place within the Ministry of Transportation. Um, it's called the Driver Certification Program. And what that program is, is they, they're the, the way that 
um, companies and some municipalities actually are members of the driver certification program, they can train and test their employees for driver's licenses. And um, it's a very similar model. So an application would come to the ministry to become a recognized authority. The recognized authority would enter into a contract with the ministry to deliver the training. The recognized authority has to develop their training based on the curriculum that we set out. And then once they've developed the training, they send it to us to, for approval. Once they've received approval, then the recognized authority can deliver the training. The training courses are approximately two to three days. And then once they've completed the training, they each applicant has to complete a written test upon completion. And those written tests are ministry tests similar to how you would get your driver's license test, that sort of test, a multiple choice question. And then once the recognized authority completes, uh, they have some administrative requirements. So what that means is they have to send a list of all of their students to the ministry and the ministry will then issue their credential. So this, this recognized authority program, this first certified super load, if municipalities wish to become a recognized authority, they can for sure um, send us an application if you wanted to train your own public works department, say, to become certified super load escorts. You could do that. You would just have to apply to us uh, similar to how you would have for your driver certification program. So, so as I had mentioned before, the permitting, as of January the 1st, all of um, the OPP will, will stop um, with the escorting of our super loads and they'll be, all of our permits will be issued for, uh, that are issued for King's Highways that are deemed super loads will require certified super load escorts. We've actually already started issuing some permits. Um, to date, if I can just back up for a second about the recognized authorities, the ministry has received a really good response to this program. We currently have uh, four recognized authorities that are in place delivering the program. We have two training schools that are delivering the program, and we have two companies who are um, delivering the program for their fleets. And we've now trained, I think we have about 30 to 40 people trained now that have been, that have successfully completed the training and the testing. And we've actually started to issue a couple of permits using the certified super load escorts instead of the police. But it's gonna take us some time to train the industry and to have a sufficient amount of um, cer certified super load escorts. So the LPP has said they'll be with us until the end of the year. So those that don't have certified super load escorts on staff right now, they'll be continuing to use the Ontario Provincial Police for the review and the approval and staffing of their super loads. We hope to have at least 150 to by the end of the year, and then by our busy season, which is next spring, we hope to have at least 360 in place. And we're we're well on on our way to having that. The other thing that's changed for us that was effective on July the first is all super load permits require to have a traffic management plan, and. I have a, we have developed a standardized traffic management plan, and if anybody's interested in in having a copy of them, please let me know. Our our information's at the back of the slide, and we can send you that. So, our traffic management plans have really been become a part of a crucial document for the certified super load escort driver. So, what the traffic management plan will entail. It gives us all of the information required for a safe and effective trip. Every carrier who's moving a super load will develop a traffic management plan. They may ask the certified super load escort driver to assist in the, tra in the development of the plan, but ultimately it's the carrier's responsibility to develop a traffic management plan, and each traffic management plan will be referred to in the permit. So the traffic management plan will give us an idea of where, will tell us exactly what they're moving, so the who, when, why, what, and where of their movement, how they will communicate effectively between the certified super load escort driver and all the parties in the group. It will give route details, and not just I'm taking Highway 401 to 402 and then getting off. We want turn by turn 
root details for these traffic management plans. Within the traffic management plan's root details, if there's at any time that your certified super load escorts are going to have to get out and control traffic, we want to know how you're going to do it. Where will your escorts be positioned? We also want to know if you're going to be shutting down highways. Have you contacted the appropriate people? And those sort of information. And if something happens, if there's a breakdown, what's your contingency plan? In each of those traffic management plans, we'll ultimately go to our weights and loads engineers and he weight and load engineer, and he will just decide whether or not the traffic management is suitable and will go forward. <clears throat> We've also developed for this was really for industry so that they could know approximately, if I'm not going to have police anymore, how many certified super load escorts will I need? And what level of traffic management plan will, will I require? So we have three different levels of traffic management plans and just kind of a little bit of a detail in each section on what um, is needed for each traffic management plan, just so the carriers have an idea of what's required. And so that when we say, this is your requirements of the traffic management plan, you didn't meet them, they kind of have an idea of, of where they went wrong. So the, and like I said, we do have a, 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 a template that you're more than welcome. I can share that with you as well. So I realize that's a lot of information <laughs> in just a short time, but um, it, again, we'll have some, uh, we'll bring it over to Chantal to any questions you might have. But if after the presentation you get back into your office and something pops up, um, please feel free to give me a call, send me an email. I can answer or send you any information that is additional that you might need. Well, Jennifer, what we'll do is we'll give people a few minutes if they have any questions to type them in the question box. So maybe one to two minutes to think about any questions if you're in a group and having a quick discussion. If you wish to type in one or two questions, we'll give you guys some time. So we're going to mute ourselves for about, how about four minutes or so to give you an opportunity to think about any questions that you had based on the presentation. And for those of you who had registered and you had provided your email address, you also have this presentation sent out to you by OGRA. So if you want to take a few minutes to quickly review it, we don't want to leave the presentation too early if anybody has any questions. Feel free to type them in your question box. We will be back online in approximately two to three minutes and answer any questions that are typed in. And then if there are none, we may be finished. All right, so it appears that we only have one question. So if Jennifer can join us, we will ask the one question that we have. And so okay. between Jennifer and Brian, the question that we have is, will there be a public education component for this program? Who would like to chime in? Jennifer, why don't you start? Okay. So, yes, that's a great question. Um, we are working with our communications uh, office to discuss on the, you know, so we need to make sure the public is aware that when they see these vehicles that they need to abide by them like they would in a construction site or if it was the police doing it. So the communications approach will be some through social media as well as um, they, we've actually done a little bit of communication with the public through our higher levels of the government. Um, like on a higher level when the HGA was first amended um, we had some outreach to the public you know we posted on the registry and then when the um, when the the um, legislation was passed, it was put in the news release as well. So we have had some public outreach so far. We are continuing to do to do more as we start seeing them on the road. And Brian, do you have any thoughts? Uh, just to say that we understand that's a critical component of this. Uh, we need the public to have a conditioned response when they see these vehicles directing traffic around a super load. The public needs to know what to expect, and uh, the persons operating in superload need to know um, what's expected of the public as well. So it's a two-way street. So we have another question, and it is, what is the municipality's right of refusal if there are no suitable roads on a proposed superload route? And we'll start with Brian this time. Brian, what are your thoughts on right to refuse? Yeah, so... Uh, 
reading the question. It's a, it's a great question. And reading the question, my, uh, I guess my understanding is we, the Ministry of Transportation issues permits for the movement of over-dimensional or oversized loads on provincial highways. And each municipality would issue their own permit or may choose to issue their own permit for movement on uh, roadways under their jurisdiction. Certainly, you have the option as a municipality with jurisdiction over that roadway not to issue a permit for movement of that load over that road. Um, usually, the way that it works is, is we require that before we issue a permit, we ask the applicant, the carrier, to confirm with municipalities that they may be going into that they uh, have permits from those municipalities. It so sometimes turns into a little bit of a chicken and egg situation because then the municipalities may ask for a copy of the provincial permit. If there are certainly some areas where you have concerns as you're issuing the permits, I'd encourage you to get in touch with our permits office uh, to facilitate coordination of these types of moves. And Jennifer, do you have any thoughts on this? Looks like we're good. So we don't have any more questions for today. We want to thank you for joining us on our webinar for the changes to the Highway Traffic Act. I was going to say Patrol Act. No, Highway Traffic Act. One of the follow-ups is any questions from session number one and today's session will be sent out via email by OGRA. We thank you for joining us for the presentation. We wish that you have an absolutely excellent day. And we want to thank Brian and Jen for joining us. Have thank yourself you. an awesome day. Bye.